Praise God. There is victory over sin. Hallelujah. Victory. There is victory over sin, folks. Hallelujah. Victory over sin. There's victory over this carnal nature that lusts. Oh, yes, there is. There is an overcoming life, people, in Christ Jesus. But that flesh has got to die. We are living in the hour, in this hour, where even those that listen to this broadcast will not endure if they won't let the flesh die. The Lord made it very clear to me we're in the hour where people are going to literally run from God or they're going to run to God. You've got to make up your mind. You're either going to run to Him or you're going to run away. Because that flesh cannot endure God's presence. That flesh cannot draw near to God. It's got to die, people. It came from the fall. It's that Adamic nature, that fallen nature that came from the fall. But God wants to give you an eye, replace that fallen nature, which is unstable, and he wants to replace it with the divine nature, which is sustainable, which is stable. Hallelujah. Which is established. We need to be established by receiving the divine nature. Amen? To be like Jesus Christ. We can be solid, people, as a rock in this hour. We can be solid in this hour that no wind, that no storm, that no nothing in this world, amen, can dissuade us or persuade us or make us to... Uh, Doubt what we believe because when you're established in Christ Jesus, that's soundness. That's wholeness. Praise God. When you have the answer, why would you be seeking for an answer? You won't be. You already have the answer. Another thing I said to my childhood friend the other day, I said, I said, look, I said, you know and I know that the number one question that's on the top of everybody's mind in the world is, where did I come from? And he said, yeah, I, I agree. That's, the, that's one of the big ones. Everybody wants to know where they came from. And I said, well, look, I said, I know where I came from. I have the answer to your question. Oh, oh. see, they don't want the answer. They say they want the answer. And they'll search for the answer. They'll spend billions of dollars building a collider and building all kinds. They'll, they'll spend all kinds of money. Where did I come from? And someone comes along like me that sometimes can't even rub two nickels together. Silver and gold, I buy none. And I say to them, I have the answer. Amen. That's, see, that's what it's all about, people. If you're going to be established in this hour, you better know the answer to the question. Right now, the whole world is taking a test. And I don't have a cheat sheet for you. It's not a cheat sheet. You're going to have to study God's Word. God has not made this test difficult, but you're going to have to study for it. But the answers, he's given us the answers, people. Amen? Hallelujah. So you think God is trying to trick you? No, he's not trying to trick you. He's giving you the answers. How much time do we spend with the answers? How much time do we spend with the answer? Knowing the answer. Because the questions on the test, there's really only one question. And there's really only one answer. 
And the question cannot be formulated into information. The question comes down to, what's the truth? That's what he said, isn't he? That was his question that Pilate asked Jesus. What is truth? Yes, I'm still speaking on the topic established in an unstable world. What is truth, he asked. He's got all this money. He's got all this authority, all this power. And he says to Jesus that's about to be crucified, what is truth? You may say, oh, Brother Joseph, that's the, the age-old question. And then you hear the world saying today, this is my truth. That's a biggie today, people. This is my truth. But you see, Pilate's saying, what is truth? Hallelujah. Jesus did not give Pilate an answer. Are you listening, people? The answer was standing right in front of him. Pilate walked away from Jesus and went out to the people and he said, I find no fault in this man. What is true? Faultless. Without fault. Hallelujah. How is it possible to be without fault? How is it possible to be justified? How is it possible for a sinner to be made clean? Hallelujah. The truth. The truth. You shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Why is it that the devil does everything he can to blind the world from the truth? is free. Amen? Hallelujah? You got to know the truth. Jesus said, I am the truth. Pilate said, what is truth? But he didn't say that to Pilate. He didn't say, when he stood before Pilate, he didn't say, I am the truth. Because the scripture says, it's not him that willeth, nor him that runneth, but it's God that shows mercy. Why didn't Jesus tell Pilate that day that he was the truth? It's God that shows mercy. You may be standing there and saying like Pilate, what is truth? You have the power to make the choice to accept Jesus or not as your Savior. And you stand there with all the power that God has given to you to make a choice. Listen to what Pilate says. He washes his hands and says, I am free of the guilt of this just man. Pilate went on in an illusion. Are you listening? He went on with an illusion, believing that he was justified, believing that he was guiltless. Are you listening, people? There's a world out there today that thinks they can wash their hands just by saying, I'm an atheist. 
I can't be guilty of his laws if I don't believe in him. He's not my God. Does that change the fact that you were created by him and that you will give an account? That you will stand before your creator? Prepare to meet thy God. Oh, my. If that doesn't put the fear of God into you. Prepare to meet thy God. Hallelujah. Are you prepared? Are you prepared to meet thy God? The one that you say does not exist. Are you, are you prepared to meet him? No man, the Bible says, no man shall be justified by God. God does not justify man. God does not justify the flesh. The Bible says these are just men made perfect. How do they become just? In their flesh? No, friend. In their soul. God saves souls. God's not even really interested in your flesh. All the things that you think are important concerning your flesh, God does not even really, God's not interested in catering to our flesh. The very thing that we're supposed to be crucifying. Amen? The Bible says the flesh is enmity with God, folks. We are to deny it and crucify it. Hallelujah. Enoch walked with God. He was not, for God took him. Do you know the name Enoch actually means? It means to self-strangle. Enoch, because he knew that the flood was coming, he began to strangle that flesh. This was before the cross. This was before Jesus Christ came and died on the cross, people. Because he got the revelation from God. Enoch, if you're going to walk with me, you can't walk with me in the flesh. You can't walk with me after the flesh, Enoch. You're going to have to crucify that flesh. How do you do that? You deny it. And the more you walk with God, that flesh dies. Amen? The flesh cannot abide in the presence of Almighty God. Cannot. Cannot. The flesh will be consumed. Our God is a consuming fire. Hallelujah. But your soul can live. Your spirit can live. But that flesh is going to the graveyard, people. That flesh is going to be consumed. That flesh cannot, the Bible says flesh and blood cannot inherit God's kingdom. It's not sustainable, people. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. That's why Jesus said you must be born again. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. The spirit, not being spiritual or, or uh, in the sense of spiritism, no. But the spirit of God is sustainable. It's eternal. It's forever. Hallelujah. This is what Jesus was saying when he said, Behold, I send the promise of the Father. Eternal life. Life in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Before the fall, 
God's creation was to be spiritual. We were to be spiritual beings. 